think that sounds cool, don't worry. Stick around to the end of the video to hear the full song. But before we get into that... What is this thing, and how can you make one? The word gen is an onomatopoeia that describes a certain sound commonly used in a subgenre of progressive metal music. It sounds kind of like... <laughs> okay, here are all the materials I used and you'll need to complete this project. So let's get right into it. To start off, I took an old piece of wood laying around in the garage and sanded it down so I didn't get any splinters. I then painted it black to make the metal drummer in my prog rock band happy. Next, I took the back plate off of an old bass guitar I'm parting out for this build. Fortunately, I teach music at a rock school where we just have these laying around collecting dust. But you could find these on places like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and Goodwill. As you can see, I continued to remove the parts from the old bass guitar. The pickups were next. Following the pickups were the volume and tone pots. Depending on the model of instrument you're using for parts, you may be able to just slide a plastic bag or towel under the tone knob and pull up. However, your knob, like mine, may require a 564 Allen wrench to loosen it first. Then use a 716 hex bit socket to loosen the nut. Just a heads up, I wouldn't recommend doing this on your normal guitar as it could damage the finish. I then had to get the rest of the guts out of the back of the bass. To do this, I first had to use a set of flat nose pliers to remove the input jack. If your parts instrument requires you to cut the wires in order to access the equipment inside, make sure that you either label or just immediately tape them back together. To do this, you can use a wire cutter slash stripper to cut the wires and then strip the protective casing off of them. After the wire is exposed, you can then twist it back together and tape it up with electrical tape. Unscrew one of the tuners from your parse guitar and use a pencil to draw a dot on the wood of about where the tuner should go. You can then use a drill with a small drill bit to draw a pilot hole. Then equip the larger drill bit about the diameter of your tuner and drill that hole. Then screw your tuner into the piece of wood. Next is the makeshift nut. For this, we use a piece of trim, trimmed down to size. <laughs> How is it 3 a.m. already? <laughs> and then we cut into it. Once again, use your pencil to draw dots about where the screws would go. Once again, with a small drill bit, draw a pilot hole both in the piece of trim and the wood. Not all the way down. So as you just heard, my dad okay. multiple times told me to not over tighten the screw in the piece of wood. Um, <laughs> and of course I proceed to split the wood. So needless to say I had to redo that step. Yeah. After measuring the scale length of the normal guitar, it's 36 inches by the way. I yet again marked and drilled another pilot hole, this time about where I thought the string should go through. I then marked about where the pickup should go, a little bit in front of the string hole, and then drilled it out. We crammed the pickup in the hole and screwed the screws down. My dad then had the great idea to use these metal brackets as a routing mechanism for the wiring. That just left the tone pots and input jack. We drilled a hole for the input jack and screwed it in, wired it back to the pots, glued the pots down, and let it dry. We then realized that the string is going to try to stick to the magnet, so we had to make some kind of makeshift bridge. We ended up going with a closet hanger of all things. This way we could route the string on top of it. And while this makes the action really high and super hard to play, at least it's playable. To counteract this, we ended up gluing another piece of trim underneath the string to act as a makeshift fretless fretboard. If you're not already, please consider subscribing.
Okay, editing Ethan here. I'm gonna stop past Ethan. Listen, dude, ju it's 4 a.m. Just like, comment, subscribe, and all the other things. Send it to your music buddies, please. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. If you guys do plan on building one for your own, uh, here's some things that you might want to keep in mind. Some things that I might have done differently if I were to do this again. So let's just start at the top here. First things first, you're going to want to make sure that the wood that you build everything off of is not too thick to where you can't fit the tuner. So my tuner, it's really not that big of an issue, um, but you know, it's only got one wrap around, which could cause issues in the future. I'm not too sure yet. Second thing, I don't even know if I really need this nut here. It's kind of just sitting on the piece of wood. I would just do it anyways, but you're definitely going to want to make sure you carve the indention more to the right if you built it the same way I did. Moving down now, probably the biggest issue with this is <clears throat> that the action is just horrendous. Once you start fretting above the imaginary fish fret, you're going to run into an issue. So, pickups are magnets, and strings are attracted to those magnets, as we know. So, I did, as you saw in the tutorial, recess some parts of the wood to fit the pickups, but you either want to recess that a lot more or figure out a way to raise the string and a piece of trim or even put a second piece of trim, which I might do in the future towards the end, to really have that action stay better. One thing to keep in mind with this is my piece of wood is kind of bowed, which is just making this issue even worse. Um, but this is one thing to keep in mind if you want to try to fix that when you're bowing. Another way to maybe solve this would be to move your makeshift bridge up more, but that doesn't really help the issue as then you'd be picking right up against it, which you already kind of have to do, and it just doesn't really solve your issue. Because of this issue, the best way to play this is honestly with a slide. Another thing to definitely keep in mind is to better label your wires when you're cutting them if you have to cut them. Uh, this was a kind of a guessing game for me and I got really lucky when I rewired them that they were all in the place that I thought they would be, but make sure you tape them up while you're going through this because I could have had a lot more headache if I didn't get so lucky. Another thing you guys might consider is chopping off the end of the stick. If you use a super long piece of wood like I did, um, it would definitely make it more practical, but you know, it's kind of sick that it's just really big, and it definitely makes a cool art piece in the studio, if nothing else. One last thing is, within transporting it between the studio and school to showcase it and back to the studio to record this video, I found that the hot glue we use to hold the pots down is coming loose. The tone knob is still tied on there, but I might try to re-glue this with either wood glue or super glue. You guys might want to just preemptively use a different type of glue. We did try to use hot glue to also secure this trim piece for the fretboard, and hot glue just kind of sucks. I would avoid it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And if you guys make your own, please tag me. I'd love to see them. I'm sure they'll be better than mine. If you're not already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free. You can always undo it. And uh, stay tuned for more music content.